Okay, so let's test your knowledge of fractions. And if you really understand fractions, then you'll be able to find the lowest common denominator of this problem very quickly. So what we have here is 1 over 25 plus 3 over 49 plus 7 over 125 plus 5 over 64 plus 1 seventh. Now, I'm not looking for you to add up all these fractions. All we want to do is find the lowest common denominator and feel free to use a calculator. All right, so if you know how to do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then by the time you finish with this video, you'll be an expert in finding the lowest common denominator. This is uh, something that a lot of uh, people think they understand uh, better than they actually do. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, if it helps you out, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, uh, you're going to want to use a calculator here so you're not cheating uh, if you want to use your calculator because again, I'm suggesting that you're going to need it. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the LCD, the lowest common denominator of all these fractions is the following, 392,000. All right, so pretty big number. And again, that's why I suggested to use your calculator. Now, if you got this problem right, irrespective of whether you were able to do this quickly or not, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that you are a certified professional expert in the area of finding the lowest common denominator. They'll be like, yeah, that's kind of boring. Come uh, talk to me when you're an expert in algebra or calculus. But listen, uh, quite frankly, um, if you were able to figure this problem out, that really is very, very good. And uh, you know, you should uh, uh, celebrate as I am celebrating here with you. Now, if you didn't get this right, don't despair because if you stick with me for a couple minutes, you'll be an expert as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. And uh, the whole idea here is this problem is pretty easy to figure out. In other words, finding the LCD if you really understand how to find the lowest common denominator, right? So in this uh, particular problem, you know, we have the denominators here, 25. 49, 125, 64, and 7. And you are going to want to find the LCD if we uh, want to actually add these fractions up. So remember, when you're dealing with fractions, you can't add or subtract fractions unless you have the same denominator. In other words, if I had 3 over 7 plus 1 half, I can't add these fractions the way this is because they don't have a common denominator. Now, there's all sorts, as a matter of fact, there's an infinite amount of common denominators that these fractions have, but we don't want to, you know, use a super large co uh, common denominator. We always want to try to find the lowest common denominator, and that's what the whole kind of, um, you know, topic of this video is. And how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at some couple basic examples. All right, now many of you out there are saying, yeah, you know what, I'm pretty good with uh, fractions. I know all about the LCD, so uh, that's great. And I want you to keep that confidence up and let's take a look at two basic examples here. And uh, let's suppose we wanted to add one third plus two fifths. Well, here the denominators are not the same, so we would have to find the lowest common denominator. And most of you, I think, uh, that have a, a general understanding of the LCD would say, well, the lowest common denominator here is 15, and in fact, you would be right. Now, what is the lowest common denominator? Well, you know, the term here is pretty, uh, you know, self-explanatory. This uh, this is the lowest number that these two, uh, two numbers in these denominators have in common, okay? It's the lowest common multiple, but really, you know, that's kind of math uh, mumbo jumbo, and, you know, a lot of people still like, eh, I don't really understand what that means as well. But a lot of ways uh, people think about the LCD is the lowest number that both these numbers divide into without a remainder. So you're like, okay, well, 3 and 5, um, both of these numbers, goes, they go into 30, but that's not the lowest number. They also go into 30, I'm sorry, 15 without a remainder. 
So that's the lowest number, so that would be the LCD. And that's a pretty good way to think about the LCD, but uh, that is not how we want to um, uh, think of it in terms of how to find the LCD. But from a conceptual standpoint, that's pretty good. All right, let's take a look at uh, this problem right here, 1 fourth plus 3 tenths. So again, we have to kind of go through this uh, mental exercise. Well, what's the lowest number? Both of these numbers go into uh, the denominators, right? So 4 and 10. So it's pretty obvious that they both go into 40. But is that the lowest number? No, your brain starts working. Well, no, they've also go into 20. So the LCD uh, for these fractions right here with these denominators is 20. So let's review exactly what the LCD is and how to find it with this problem. And uh, after we review this, I think I'm going to give uh, those of you out there that didn't get this problem right another chance to see if you can actually figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about how to find the LCD because really that is the um, kind of my objective in this video. Okay, it's, you know, of course I want you to be able to work fast, but you can work fast if you know what you're, you know, doing, right? Okay, so let's talk about how to find the LCD and we'll use this basic uh, problem right here, one fourth plus three tenths. We already uh, know that the LCD here is 20. All right, but what do we need to do to find the LCD? Well, we have to look at the respective denominators. In this case, we have 4 and 10, and we, uh, what we want to do is prime factor each of these denominators. Now, of course, I can have more than two denominators, uh, like in our uh, problem, I have a lot of different fractions, but let's just focus on these two simple numbers here and let's take a look at the prime factors for each of these okay so 4 and 10 anytime you want to find the prime factors of a number uh, you uh, a great way to do that is using a factor tree so 4 okay you want to just start factoring this number well the only way we could factor 4 is 1 times 4 or 2 times 2 and 2 is a prime number so you would want to circle this and 2 right here is another prime number so 4 we can express as a product of prime factors. In this case, it's two times two, but I want you to pay attention to what I'm gonna say here. And that is anytime you have repeating factors, like two times two, or maybe two times two times two, always express that as a power. So two times two is two squared. This is very important and you'll see why in just one second. Okay, so four is equal to two squared. Uh, that's what, um, those are the prime factors of 4 expressed as a power. Okay, how about 10? Well, 10 is 2 times 5. Those are the prime factors. 2 is prime and 5 is prime. We can't factor anymore. So we can express 10 as uh, being equal to the product of 2 and 5. All right, so with all that being done, now we can find the um, LCD. So the LCD uh, is basically a product of all the prime factors. We're gonna take all the prime factors between all these uh, denominators. Okay, we got uh, this one here and this one over here. We're gonna take all the unique prime factors and we're gonna multiply them together and that is going to uh, get, get us to our LCD. So let's go ahead and take a look at this specific example right here. Okay, so again, the LCD is gonna be the product of each unique prime factor, but there's a little bit of a twist here, okay? And if you can remember this, then you'll be a certified professional expert in the area of finding the lowest common denominator. Okay, so here is our example. We have four is equal to two squared, and 10 is equal to two uh, times five. Now this two right here is the same thing as two to the first. So remember, the LCD is gonna be the product of each unique prime factor. So let's just kind of scan our prime factors here. So here, this is a prime factor, this is another prime factor, and this is another prime factor. So here I have two squared, okay, so two, uh, we have a power of two as a prime factor, and this is two to the first. So here is the big twist, okay? If you have the same number uh, to a different power, this is two squared, this is two to the first, all you need to take, okay, in terms of your uh, having your prime factor in your LCD is the highest power, okay? So two squared, two to the first. We don't need to have this two to the first right here. We just need the highest power of two, which is two to the second in our LCD. 
Okay, so that represents a two as a prime factor. We always take the highest power of whatever um, uh, powers we may have. So two to the first, two to the first here, two squared. We're going to take two squared. I'm sorry, I don't know if I said two to the first because you know uh, sometimes I forget. But anyways, there you go, two squared. Two squared is going to be in our LCD. Now, what other prime factors do we have? Well, we only have one other, so we need five represented as well. Okay, so our LCD is going to be 2 squared times 5. 2 squared, again, is going to be what? That is 4, right, times 5, which, of course, is 20. And that is how we uh, get to the LCD. Okay, so the procedure, again, is we want to factor, prime factor, each of uh, the respective denominators, okay? We want to express those uh, in powers, okay? And then we want to represent, and of course, if we do have powers, we may not have powers. And then when you um, want to find the LCD, we just need to have each uh, unique prime factor represented. And if uh, we have repeating um, or the same uh, base, but different exponent, in other words, two to the second or two to the third, we always take the highest power of whatever uh, powers we have. Uh, to represent that in our LCD. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. And if you're saying, oh, okay, I get that, then maybe you want to uh, retry this problem. Okay, so let's apply our knowledge on how to find the LCD to actually solve this problem pretty quickly. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to very quickly hit that subscribe button. Now, I wouldn't ask you uh, if this didn't make such a huge difference, not only in uh, my own personal success with my YouTube channel. And, you know, to be honest with you, yes, of course, I want to, you know, have the satisfaction to grow my channel as large as possible. But really, what this allows uh, me, when you do subscribe, it allows me to reach more people that are interested in math and uh, most importantly, those people who need help in mathematics. It's my passion to save people from giving up on math too early. Okay, this is a huge crisis that's out there and unfortunately, most people give up in math because they don't have the proper encouragement and more often than not, they may, they may not be getting the best math instruction. It's my goal is to, uh, to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So this really does help. I definitely appreciate it. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so now let's go ahead and tackle this problem. And here is the problem again, right? So we're not going to add these up. We just need to find the LCD. So we're going to focus in on the uh, denominators here. So we have 25, 49, 125, 64, and 7. Okay, you can see here. I have all these uh, numbers uh, broken uh, down, 25, 49, 125, 64, and 7. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to look at the prime factors of each of these numbers. And these are pretty common numbers in terms of, you know, uh, you should kind of recognize that we're dealing with um, uh, things that can be represented as powers, okay? So 25, for example, um, I think most people should know that, oh, that's 5 squared, right? So these are not overly... Uh, difficult numbers. 49 is the same thing as 7 squared. 125 is the same thing as 5 cubed. Okay, so 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. So now, remember, uh, because we want to prime factor, um, you know, our denominators, uh, and of course, we want to represent any repeating uh, factors as powers, you know, we're kind of looking, hey, can I, um, you know, uh, easily prime factor these? And can I prime, uh, pr uh, prime factor these numbers as powers? And you can see here, this is super easy because each one of these denominators can be represented with a pr um, uh, prime factor to a particular power, right? So five to the second, five is prime, seven is prime. Five, uh, so seven squared is 49. 125, five cubed is, uh, that's of course, five is prime. Now, 64, you might be saying, well, that's 8 uh, squared. Well, 8 is not prime. So if you break down 64, for example, let me just do this real quick right here. So let's suppose, all right, 64, if you wanted to just do this as a prime factor tree, so this is going to be 8 times 8, for example. So 8 times 8 uh, is not prime, so you keep going. So that's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. And then we got 2 times 2 times 2 over here. So 64 is going to be 2 to the, now 2 is prime now, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 to the 6. 
Uh, so if you take two, multiply uh, by itself six times, you'll get back to 64. So remember, you always have to prime factor. Okay, so 64 is two to the six, and then seven is seven to the first. All right, now this should be fairly easy to identify. So now we could just quickly build our LCD. Okay, so I'm scanning my numbers here, right? And I'm thinking to myself, all right, uh, let's take a look at all the unique prime factors. I have fives, okay, I have uh, two sevens, I have two fives, so I got five squared and five to the third. So I'm going to take the highest power of five, right, into our LCD. Now let's take a look at seven. I have seven squared and seven to the first. I'm gonna take the highest power of seven, so that's gonna be seven squared. So that takes care of the sevens, and it take, that takes care of the fives. Let's kind of cross these out. And that just leaves us with two to the six, so we have to have that represented as well. Okay, so five cubed is going to be five times five times five. That's 125. Seven squared is going to uh, be uh, 49. And two to the six, we already saw that that is 64. So now this is where you want, you're going to want to use your calculator and multiply these three numbers together, and you get 392 which is our LCD. Okay, so again, even if you took some time to have to, you know, and you kind of struggle with this and played around with this and whatnot, but you still, if you still got the right answer, that's very good. But I think that, you know, if you really understand what you're doing, you're like, okay, let me see here. These denominators, I can express these pretty easily as um, powers of prime numbers. And because I know exactly how to find the LCD, I can quickly you know, at least get the products, and then of course, you know, I can get my calculator out and help me out, okay? All right, so even if you have a calculator and you're doing a fraction problem, you still need to know what you're doing. And by the way, this kind of procedure that I just went over in terms of finding the lowest common denominator, it's the same thing you have to apply when you're doing fraction problems in algebra. All right, so again, the whole idea here is to kind of remind, uh, remind you that you know, in basic math, there is a lot of things to master, okay? And one particular um, place uh, that a lot of people think they know better than they actually do is fractions, but there's other stuff as well, like order of operations, decimals, place values, positive, negative numbers, etc. Now, if you want to review basic math, okay, I have a great, I have a great little mini course. It's only a three chapter course, but it really will kind of um, revamp all your basic math skills. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description below. It's called my Math Foundations course. And uh, it's a good review for those of you that wanna kinda of relearn math. And then from there, you can move on to more exciting things like algebra. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.